Good morning, everybody. Um, if you happen to be new here and you have no idea who I am, I'll introduce myself. My name is Brooke. Um, but if you're a, if you are a returning subscriber, then you already know who I am and what I do. Um, and today, I do like a mix of things on this channel. I do ASMR videos rather frequently, but I also do a lot of healthy lifestyle videos and videos about my baby, videos of plant-based recipes, and just different things like that. And today is going to be one of the latter kinds of videos. I will be doing just kind of a healthy routine for being pregnant specifically uh, during the holidays because it's been like tough being pregnant as it is. Like yesterday, I had a beautiful breakfast of toast with peanut butter. I sprinkled some ground flax seeds on there, some fresh strawberries and natural peanut butter. And I was like, I am feeling so good right now. And then like an hour later, I had a huge bowl of peanut butter Captain Crunch. So, you know, it's all about balance when you're pregnant. Um, but especially, like, you know, just, just being pregnant, but even if you're not pregnant, I'm just gonna give you some good survival tips throughout this video. Uh, and, you know, during this season, it's really easy to overspend and to spend what you don't have and to completely go into debt for the ones that you love. Uh, and that's not okay. It's absolutely not okay because this time of the year is stressful enough, you know? Some people don't like their families. A lot of people don't like being broke and not having any money because they spent it all on their families that they don't necessarily like. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, um, today I want to talk about, you know, cheap, inexpensive, healthy things to eat because around this time it's so easy to just be like, well, you know, in Minnesota especially, it's cold and I, I just want, you know, I just want a freaking burger. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to go to, what's a burger place? Burger King. Nobody goes to Burger King to like get a good burger, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, like for me, White Castle lately has been like my thing. They have, uh, arms getting tired. <laughs> they have a plant-based impossible burger and I have been loving that and I've been loving some Sprite with it and those fries. Ooh, mamacita, it's been so good. But your girl's on a budget. I am on a serious budget, as we all are. I've already done all of my Christmas shopping, so I don't necessarily have to worry about, like, you know, keeping money saved for Christmas presents, but I have to just worry about having money because I've got a baby on the way. I have a baby. <laughs> and so I can't just keep going out to eat or eating all this junky, expensive food. So I'm going to show you some healthful, inexpensive things that I'm going to be eating throughout the day, as well as tips to prevent bloating, to keep you regular, and I'm also going to include an at-home, easy third trimester pregnancy workout. And of course, you can do this workout if you're not pregnant, if you're a beginner to working out, if you, um, have, you know, it's going to be very modified. So if you have joint issues or anything like that, you can absolutely follow this workout. You can do it in your first or second trimester too. I'm just specifically in my third trimester, so I'm going to be talking about it for me, uh, from my point of view. So without further ado, let's head into the kitchen. I'll show you guys my little bump situation and then we'll start making some breakfast. So, sorry about the weird angle. But this is my, this is my bump situation and my messy kitchen. <laughs> I swear, like this pose used to look so good on me when I wasn't pregnant, but now I'm, it looks like I'm, you know, trying to poop or that I've got a bad back. I'm not sure, but this is, this is my little bump. And from the front, it's like, <laughs> pregnant who? Who is this? She's not pregnant. <laughs> yes, I am. I am 30 weeks pregnant tomorrow. I have completed 30 weeks of being pregnant with this little girl and uh, yeah, I've got 10 weeks left. But anyway, so my first tip for staying healthy during the holidays and being a pregnant beach is uh, drink water. Drink all the water and I've been always been pretty good at drinking water and making sure that I'm super hydrated throughout the day. Um, I know that some individuals find it really hard to drink the amount of water that they're supposed to or to they have a goal to drink a gallon of water throughout the day and it's just like so unachievable seemingly for them. Uh, I've never really had that problem. 
I usually try to drink 100 to 150 ounces of water a day, which may seem like a lot, but uh, it's just, especially being pregnant, I really wanna stay hydrated. I want to prevent swelling as much as possible, and uh, I'm already peeing enough as it is, so it's like, what's a couple more pees throughout the day? <laughs> uh, one thing that's really helped me drink like way more water than I even used to is this stainless steel straw. It has completely rejuvenated my love for water. And I honestly, I hate straws with a passion because, you know, plastic is bad for the environment. I do try to avoid um, single use plastic as much as possible. But not only that, like reusable straws, I've always just found them so disgusting and I don't know why, but I just thought that they were so gross. But I got one because I was like, you know what, sometimes I do need a straw and I don't wanna use a plastic straw anymore ever, like not for any reason. So I got a stainless steel straw, I broke down and I got one. I, it has like a little bend in the top and it has changed my life. Um, now I drink ice cold water with it and it's so good, it's so cold. And the straw itself gets really cold because it's made of steel and it's like, oh my gosh, you guys, like I drink so much water that it, it's, it's kind of scary. But what I'm trying to say, so good, what I'm trying to say is, if you struggle with drinking water, try to change it up. Maybe add some fruit, infuse your water overnight, make it tastier. Um, if you normally just drink room temperature water, try to add some ice. Get a stainless steel straw or a glass straw. Um, get a fun new water bottle, something like that, and it will help. And you know what? If all of those little tips and tricks fail, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta put your big girl pants on and drink the water. <laughs> I know that it's not easy. But just like with any change, if you just force yourself to do it over and over and over, eventually it's just gonna become part of your lifestyle. And, and that's a beautiful thing, because then you won't even have to think about it. Water is so important. We're made mostly of water. It helps with literally everything in your body. If we ever, in this household, if we ever have headaches, if we ever have nightmares, if we ever have a runny nose or a sore throat, if anything is going wrong, if CJ's knees hurt, we're like, probably not drinking enough water. And it's it's so true. Once you start drinking as much water as you're supposed to, then your whole life gets better, okay? It gets better. So yes, um, tip number one is to drink your water. But I am in a hurry. My car has been started for like 15 minutes because it's Minnesota, it's cold. We gotta start it early. I know it seems excessive, but we don't have a choice. So what I'm going to do now is going to have, I'm going to have a quick probiotic supplement. Um, the probiotic supplement that I use has varied over time. Sometimes I've used uh, like, I don't even know how to describe it, like caps encapsulated uh, refrigerated probiotics and those are great. They are fantastic, but the problem is since they're in an encapsulated form it's really not the best version of a probiotic that you can provide your body and they're dang expensive so it's like if you're already going to be spending that much money at least get like the best that you can a lot of people use yogurt which is fine um i don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with a good unsweetened greek yogurt from time to time i'm vegan so i personally don't participate in that but some people do and that's totally cool um but yeah, and then there are also like uh, liquid supplements, basically, vegan and uh, dairy that you can use that are like a yogurt but a liquid. Um, and you can drink those, you can have a shot of it, um, or you can drink like, I think it's a couple tablespoons or something like that. The one that I've been using lately and that I've been loving so much is by this brand, uh, Kashea. 
and it says that they're a plant-based yogurt alternative but they're really trying to move their brand I think away from the yogurt idea because people hear that and they're like oh it's a yogurt I'll eat it with my granola and it's not that's not what it is it's a supplement right it's a probiotic supplement and so what you do is you have a tablespoon or two you can have it um like by itself just like tablespoon you know tablespoon of sugar helps the medicine go down um, or you can eat it with fruit which is what I choose to do because I really I don't like the taste of plain yogurts uh, it's just not my thing I when I was not vegan I used to enjoy like the Greek or the Yoplait whips or whatever they were the whipped moussey like cheesecake flavored yogurt that was my ish but uh, I I've never been a plain yogurt kind of girl so I like to use this with fruit and um, so what you do is you, you take one or two tablespoons of this supplement with, um, I usually do breakfast and dinner because it's twice a day is the best amount that you can take it. But you know, you know, whatever works for you. If it's just once during breakfast, if it's breakfast and lunch, who cares as long as you're getting it down twice a day. And ideally you want to take it about 30 minutes before your meal. And um, yeah, it's a live probiotic supplement. Here's how you can kind of look at the right here, right here. Um, it says Kashaya yogurt uses 13 diverse strains of live and activated bacteria with a fermentation time of 24 plus hours. Live probiotics have been shown to help support gut lining, immune system, and total body wellness. Kashaya yogurt caters to vegans, lactose intolerant folks, and non-dairy customers alike. And even if you're not non-dairy, highly recommend not consuming dairy, so, uh, or at least cutting down. And if this is one of the areas that you do it, fantastic, good for you. But you'll see on here, um, if it'll load, all of the different strains of bacteria that are in here. Isn't that disgusting sounding? Like, oh, look at all the bacteria, look at all the organisms in here. But I promise it's good for your gut health. You wanna always make sure that you're taking care of your gut because if you're not taking care of your gut, you're not gonna be regular, you're not gonna be digesting things properly and overall you're just gonna feel like crap and nobody wants that, especially around the holidays. So uh, I'm just going to cut up some strawberries and take a spoonful of this and then I have to go, honey. I have to be on my way, so let's do that. My dog thinks that there's a burglar outside so I went to like check it out and it was a very small child walking down the street, like kicking a ball by himself. <laughs> yeah, the three-year-old is really what we've got to worry about, huh? No, it's our gut health. So here's what we've got here. I just cut up one strawberry, so I've got some pieces of it in a spoon, and I'm just going to take my probiotic supplement. Oh. And bottoms up. Mm -mm. And now I'm just putting the other berries on top of what I have left. Mm -hmm. Find a good probiotic that you love, that works for you, that's easily accessible, um, that's affordable and take it every day, every single day. It'll be so revolutionary for your gut health, which will revolutionize the health of your entire body. I promise. Um, even like kombucha, kombucha is a great one. A kombucha a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> but the problem is with that, is that store-bought kombuchas can also contain some not so good stuff, you know, some added sugar, um, artificial sweeteners, even some dye, dyes and colors, you know, sometimes you just, you just don't know what to look for if you're not a, if you're not a nutrition label expert, then you might just look at it and be like, okay, this looks good, but it might not be. There might be some hidden stuff with some sneaky names. But um, if you do find a good kombucha that you love, do that. Like do something, something fermented. Kimchi is one that a lot of people like. Um, I personally am not a fan of kimchi. So uh, I would rather just supplement with 
something like this, but it's totally up to you. I get this off of Amazon. I will link it down below. Um, but yeah, if you start off your day with some probiotics and a huge glass of water, honey, mm -hmm, it'll change your whole life. So quickly while I'm in my driveway still, I just wanted to let you know also that when you're pregnant specifically, um, you can deal with a lot of problems with your joints, um, just a lot of joint pain. You can deal with cramps, insane cramps. Um, I got those for a few weeks a little while ago in my legs. They would wake me up at night. They hurt so bad. Um, and then also problems with like constipation and stuff and drinking water can help with all of those things. Uh, I know I mentioned, woo, I know I mentioned swelling um, and how it can help with that, but it helps with so many more things during pregnancy to make sure that you're hydrated. So now I better get driving because it's unsafe to vlog and drive. <laughs> okay, so I'm back and I'm going to show you how to make my famous mashed potatoes. And I'm going to actually show you a few different ways in one because, uh, you know, I'll show you like step one to make them a certain way. And then if you want to take it a step further and then a step further, I'll show you all three of those. But what I'm going to do, normally I don't measure out any of my ingredients just because, just because I don't. So I'll make sure to do that today. But I have four big red potatoes here. And I'm just going to make enough for me and CJ with enough for like maybe a third or fourth helping um, or a third or fourth serving. So let's just say that these four big potatoes are going to serve four people. Um, and I have some water boiling over there. It's already boiling. I'm way ahead of myself and I'm going to cut these potatoes. I'm going to cut them in half and then um, dice into, um, I'll show you. So what you're gonna do is you're going to cut the potato in half like that and then in half again and then into pieces that are hmm not too thick not too thick but like a half an inch thick maybe three quarters of an inch thick and that is how you want your potatoes to look I'm just going to quickly do that to all of my potatoes and then dump them into the water First, I'm going to show you how to make them super healthy if you're trying to watch what you're eating for the holiday season. But if you're not, and you're just like, well, I just want it to be plant-based, I want it to be dairy-free, but I don't really care if it's healthy or not, which is how I am with cookies, um, then yeah, I'll show you how to do that as well. This is supposed to be a really quick recipe. So that's why you want to cut them at all instead of just throwing them in in halves because this will cook a lot faster. The other ingredients that you're going to need are some minced garlic. You can do fresh garlic as well if you don't mind chopping, but again, I like it easy, I like it cheap. So that's what we're going to do. And um, then you're also going to want some unsweetened almond milk. You can also use water. You don't have to feel like you need to use a plant-based milk. Um, if you don't have any on hand or if all you have is like vanilla or something, you can use water. That is okay. <laughs> uh, but then uh, you're just going to need whatever spices you like. Sometimes I add some like cayenne pepper and that's really tasty if you want like a little kick to them. Um, I really like this salt-free seasoning. It's actually from the Dollar Tree as well. It's just called salt-free seasoning. I use pepper, I use pink Himalayan salt, and then this one I'm not going to be adding to um, the potatoes today because CJ hates it and he's going to be eating these potatoes as well. They're his absolute favorite. If I ever am like, what do you want me to make you? It's always mashed potatoes. So meat eaters, dairy lovers, they love these mashed potatoes as well. I bring them to every holiday event. But nutritional yeast, CJ does not like. A lot of vegans like it. It adds a cheesy kind of flavor. So if you're looking for some garlic, cheesy mashed potatoes, then you can definitely add this. I'm just not going to be doing it today, at least not to the whole batch. If anything, I'll add it for, add it for myself. But yeah, so we've got our potatoes over there in the boiling water. And they're going to take probably about 10 
minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And what you want to watch for, check them every, uh, every few minutes uh, to see if they can be pierced with a fork. And if it just boop, boop, like slides in and out, that's how you know you're done. You want to drain them. What I do if I'm not using a plant-based milk is I actually leave a little bit of the p potato water, I guess. I leave a little bit of that in the pan so I can mash it up with that water instead of just like other regular water. I don't know why. I just feel like it keeps the potato flavor. You know what I'm saying. Anyways, I'm pregnant. But um, to make these even uh, more unhealthy but extra delicious, I'm going to be adding a vegan butter. Normally I would use Earth Balance, but unfortunately Earth Balance is really expensive um, I, and I can only find it in tubs like this big, so I never get it because I go through vegan butter like crazy fast. So um, instead, there are so many other cheaper plant-based options. Smart Balance is a really good one because you can get a big green tub of it from Walmart. Um, but what I have on hand today is this Country Crock. Um, that's, that's just what I happen to have in my fridge. And any plant-based butter is going to be fine. It's just I do prefer Earth Balance. And I'm going to add this as step two because if you want to keep it healthy, leave this out of it. You don't need it. But if you want it extra creamy and buttery, we're going to add this later. Legitimately, I think that they taste just as good with any potato. So if you have sweet potatoes on hand, go ahead, make some mashed sweet potatoes. If you only have regular russet, you know, white potatoes, use those too. I just have the red potatoes because that's what CJ likes best, but I know that you can get the regular, like, regular white potatoes um, for a lot cheaper. So you can get like 10 pounds for four bucks or something at Walmart. So if that's what you wanna do, or if you're cooking for a lot of people, you just don't have a lot of money, you still wanna make something good, definitely do that. That is a great option. But I wanna show you a good, healthy alternative to eggnog. Here we have CJ's eggnog, because again, he loves his dairy, he loves his meat, you know, all that stuff. I don't. So I got this silk nog right here, and it's just the original. And I just wanna show you something pretty shocking. I wanna compare the nutrition labels for you in case you don't really know how or you're like, what the hell do I look at here? <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, I just wanna show you guys the huge difference that it makes from going from a non-dairy to a dairy option and why you should maybe consider at least like doing half and half, right? If you're gonna have eggnog, totally fine. It's 180 calories and nine grams of fat for a half cup. So if you even just do half and half with this, it's gonna make such a huge difference and I'm going to show you why. There we go, nine grams of fat. Five of those grams are saturated fats. And you can just go down and see the different amounts of cholesterol. There are 65 milligrams of cholesterol, which is almost a quarter of your daily value if you um, eat a 2,000 calorie diet, which let's be honest, not a lot of us do. Um, everybody is different, but that's what these nutrition labels are based off of. And then it has five grams of protein and 19 grams of sugar. And the ingredients are um, non-fat milk, cream, sugar, corn syrup, sugared egg yolks, natural and artificial flavors, spices, guar gum, carrageenan, salt, and then turmeric and annatto for color. So that's 11 ingredients ish. I'm just including like, you know, all the natural and artificial flavors, one ingredient, you know, that kind of thing. So 11 ingredients in this, and it also has carrageenan, which if you don't know anything about, perhaps I can make a video on it. It's just something that you want to avoid as much as possible. Now let's look at my soy nog. Ready? It sounds gross, but CJ tried it and said that it was delicious. It just, the only thing he didn't like about it was that it wasn't as thick as his eggnog. It was a little watered down. So, um, if that makes a difference. Anyways, so with my nutrition label here, you can see that it's only 80 calories for half a cup and 1.5 grams of fat, none of which is saturated fats. Um, it also has zero milligrams of cholesterol, none, because no animal products have cholesterol. It also has less sodium and less sugar at 11 grams of sugar. It only has three grams of protein as opposed to the other ones, five grams. But here are the ingredients. Most people say, oh no, I don't wanna drink soy milk or whatever because it has more ingredients. Milk is just milk. 
eggnog, however, you heard 11 ingredients, right? This one has soy milk, which is filtered water. I'll just count these two ingredients. Filtered water, soybeans, cane sugar, locust bean gum, sea salt, natural flavor, and turmeric and annatto. Just like the same coloring. So this one only has seven ingredients as opposed to the 11. It has less sodium, less sugar, it has um, no cholesterol, it has no saturated fats, and it's less than, or it's almost half the calories for the same serving size. So it's just a good option. I'm just saying, I think it's delicious. My mother also tried it, and again, she she does not do dairy-free things. Um, and she was like, oh my God, that is so good. So, just saying, if you are looking to make kind of a healthier switch, cut out some of that dairy, um, this is a really good option. You also might have noticed that I didn't peel the potatoes. If you would rather peel the potatoes, absolutely feel free to do so. Um, I personally like them with the, at least most of the, um, outer layer of potato, the skin. I like my potatoes with that. I actually call them my dirty red mashed potatoes because they're made with red potatoes and they're dirty as in, you know, they still have the skin on them. Yeah, but you can absolutely feel free to peel them if you would like to. I just, again, I like doing things fast and easy. I don't want to have to worry about it. So my potatoes are finished. I just rinsed, rinsed out all of the water. Um, again, at this point, you can like there are even peels that are coming off. You can totally take those out if you want to. You can take some of them out, most of them out, none of them, it really doesn't matter. Whatever your preference is. If there are any just straight up loose ones that aren't even attached to the potato anymore, I'll kind of take those out. But otherwise there's really no need. At this point is when you would add um, a little bit of water and mash them up if you wanted them to be super low fat and non-processed. However, I'm going to be adding my almond milk. Passport! No. Never mind my dog, she's having fun. And I'm just going to add it in kind of splash by splash. Start with a little and work your way up. Do not add too much liquid too quickly. You will regret it. And if you don't like any garlic at all, that's cool too. I'm probably adding about two tablespoons. If you like a thick mashed potato, then add less milk. If you like it uh, more like uh, airy and whipped and that light fluffy mashed potato, then you can even use a hand mixer and mix them with that and then just add a little bit more milk. And then there'll be that nice fluffy consistency. At this point, you can keep adding um, the milk, you can add your spices, and you can leave it there. You don't have to add any butter or anything like that. However, I definitely like some butter, so I'm going to be adding that to it. It adds just a little bit of creaminess, it adds that um, buttery color and flavor. I'm going to put in probably about a third cup of butter. You can use more if you're feeling super, super wild, or you cannot. It's up to you. And trust me, literally nobody will be able to tell the difference. No one would ever guess that these mashed potatoes are not vegan. I promise you that. I promise, I promise, I promise. That's why I bring them to every single event. I bring my mashed potatoes because they're the easiest thing. No one's ever gonna be like, hmm, these taste funky. They're just gonna be like, damn, that's good stuff. I've got my salt-free seasoning here. This has a lot of different spices in it. I know it has some dried lemon, granulated garlic, minced onion, orange peel, black pepper, citric acid, and crushed red pepper and parsley flakes. So. It's got a lot of different flavors in there and I feel like it goes really well with everything. I'm also just going to be adding some pepper and a generous amount of that pink salt. Probably about two teaspoons total. And here you can also completely add that nutritional yeast, whatever you want. Um, any other spices you like, go ahead, 
the world is your oyster. <laughs> Awesome. Delicious. All right, sorry the lighting is just terrible, guys. I tried to get home in time to film this when there was still daylight, but there is not very much left. Here are the mashed potatoes. I think it makes about four cups or five, maybe six cups of mashed potatoes, which is a lot. So um, this is a good amount, maybe if you're a family of four. Uh, that way you'll have enough for the rest of you, but probably not enough for leftovers. So feel free to double or triple this recipe as needed. I just have some red pepper flakes on here uh, to garnish it. I like a little bit of spice and so does CJ. They're super light and fluffy, but you can make them as dense as you want. I I love both ways. I love potatoes in all forms. So there is that. This recipe is the bomb. So if you do want to make some mashed potatoes for your family, or if you just want to eat mashed potatoes, but you're like, eh, I'm trying to watch it this year, I've got a lot of health goals, then this is a great option for you. You can make it as healthy or as unhealthy as you want. <laughs> hey guys, sorry for the bad lighting as usual, but I was just sitting here editing this, this whole video together and I was just about to get my workout done and show you guys that. And then I realized that this video is already 30 minutes long, so the workout part of the video is definitely going to have to wait until my next one. So. Make sure that you're subscribed with your notification bell on because I'm going to be filming a couple more videos a lot like this one. I hope that you enjoyed all of my quick tips and the comparison of the nutrition labels and all of those things with how to stay healthy, especially during the holidays and especially as a pregnant person. I hope that you really enjoyed this video and if you did, please let me know, comment it down below, give this video a like, do all of the things, follow me on Instagram. I would love to have you over there. We can chat. You can look at my pictures. You can look at my baby bump and my dog and my story every day <laughs> And yeah, that's about it guys. I'm gonna cut this video off before it goes on any longer <laughs> So uh, yeah, look forward to my next videos and I will see you then. Okay. Bye